Part 3, Civilization 6, yet another clicking game. So, why, why does this suck? Why is Civilization 6 going to be a bad game? Because it's not a decision-based game at all. It's a clicking game. And this is why it's also difficult or impossible to port to other mediums, like consoles and, and mobile phones. Because if you have a decision-based game, then it's no problem, you know, you can either create buttons or whatever to make decisions and decisions are reflected, you know, it's, it's, easy, it's easier to create a user interface. But it's a clicking game, it has nothing to do with decisions. If you start on a map, like this London, you know, this is by the way from Arumba's uh, recording of uh, the gameplay he did, so I know that Civilization 6 will be completely the same, exactly the same as Civilization 5 and Beyond Earth in this regard, and that's why it's going to suck, you know, it, 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 it didn't change. So, uh, for example, you say you have London, you know, and you, you start with certain tiles around you, you have wine and milk and, I don't know, wheat and uh, uh, dyes, uh, around, and you have a few forests and a few plains and rivers and so on, fine. And they made it possible that you have a harbor, uh, you know, like two tiles from your city. Big whoop to do. But these tiles, they mean nothing. You know, what's, what does wine do? Plus two happiness? You know, like uh, uh, what does uh, uh, the fact that you have river does? Plus one food? Is that a decision? You know, you, you create a worker and you improve the wine and then what? You have plus three happiness? So you have to invest your time, wait turns for the for the builder to for for the builder to be created. You have to move then that worker to the tile and just click one button and pff, you have plus three something. How is that a decision? No, that's 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 not a decision based game. That's a clicking game. It's like SimCity. You know, without disasters and, and, I don't know, like, no, it's not SimCity, it's even worse. You know, in SimCity at least you have, you had to, it's an OCD game. That's what it is. It's a game where you, you are building a perfect, harmonious uh, civilization that's always going to be the same. Why? Because it's a clicking game, it's not a decision-based game. If you have mountains, it will feature scientific buildings. If you have uh, wine, it will be a winery. If you have, I don't know, plains, it's going to be a farm. That's what it is. Basically, you're, you're just building things in a certain order and you are surprised and happy that if you, you know, send a worker to some sheep that you're going to get milk. And that milk will enable you to build another city and that city will have, I don't know, horses and you will be able to build cavalry. Is that really what games should be about? Is this how you want to spend thousands of hours of your life? Clicking certain units and buildings and tiles and saying to yourself, wow, that was a really interesting decision. They removed the two most critical things from this game. Random events and, uh, and uh, decisions, like penalties, you know? And people didn't like random events because they were bad. Of course they were bad, because they were poorly implemented. That's why. Events were supposed to be a way to I introduce decisions to the game. Not some crappy event that you were always like were rolling your eyes about, oh geez, this is terrible. Take for example, the fo uh, take the following example. Let's say you have a scout, okay, and this is your map. You founded London. What is a decision-based game? A decision-based game is where whatever you do will affect something else in a significant way. Let's say you have a scout. You s you plant London and you have a scout. Now imagine if instead of uh, moving the scout around on the map, you tell it, follow this river, or follow that river, or you tell it, 
find me the nearest settlement or find me the nearest mountain. Okay? Does it make sense? Yes, it does. If these areas are relevant. If rivers are relevant. Why would following a river be relevant? Well, maybe, I don't know, there is another place for a settlement that might be alongside this river and you can connect these settlements without building roads. And you can, you know, and, and river transport is much improved uh, from, from roads because it's faster, at least in one way. So that's a relevant decision. Or for example, find me, find me a hill on my borders. Why? Because I want to build a fort there. That's a relevant decision. Or, for example, I don't know, in London there is a fire on turn 5. How do you respond? Do you spend money to repair the buildings? Do you send in the army to make the repairs? Do you, I don't know, uh, invest, uh, uh, do you uh, relocate the citizens to another tile and send them food from your, from your, from your granary? The fire happened, that's an event. What, what you are doing with this event is the decision. Or, for example, the building of granary. Why would building a granary be a decision? Of no significance, no real one anyway. But if you say, for example, uh, these things that are in the game that could be automatic, should be automatic. And, these, uh, and those things should be replaced by things that really matter. For example, <clears throat> if you have, I don't know, two farms and you have a certain technology, you will, the city will gain a granary. Great. So building those two farms was actually a relevant decision so you can get something for it. But why is that important? Well, if the fire comes around and, you know, or, or, or a flood or a famine or, I don't know, a drought, having the granary will suddenly enable you to select another option in your decision-making. It will say, I don't know, uh, grant fruit, food from the granary. But is building a granary a relevant decision? No. Civilizations and games revolve around constant effects of decisions. And most games treat their players like they should, and that they, that they are automatically failing. This is true for, especially true for a civilization building game. Civilizations by default are failing. That's what they do. It's the nature of man to be failing, either to religious strife or economic troubles or nationalism or poor decisions uh, or uh, aggressors from the outside. Civilizations are by default failing. Your job as a player of civilization game in Civilization VI should be to keep your nation afloat, to create decisions that are relevant every single turn, and to have sets of decisions that will make you make sacrifices, tough decisions, sometimes anger your citizens or stifle your economy, but have long-term, uh, 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 short-term, medium-term goals that you can be, uh, make and either capitalize on those or not. This is how Civilization VI should play. Take, for example, XCOM again. You are at a crossroads. Do you research lasers? Or do you re research alien capture? Both of these are significant short-term decisions. One will enable you for your units to be stronger, to die less often, to uh, engage uh, more aliens more efficiently, more often. Or are you going to try and capture aliens, speed up your research and eventually catch up to the point where you would be if you research lasers and be much more rich for it. You know, like it's a, it's a bigger risk, but potentially a much bigger reward. 
And if you choose the wrong one, if you execute the wrong one, the wrong path, you choose the wrong decision, it's going to bite you in the ass. Not immediately, but, but after, I don't know, five landings of aliens, you will realize, oh shit, I should have researched lasers first. Because your whole squad wiped. You know, your elite squad just wiped. Because they had like, pff, I don't know, earth weapons with, uh, against some super creatures. Uh, these are relevant decisions. For example, in Civilization 6, let's say, ignore this, ignore that, decide on this, you know, like, if you want to build an army, it should take 10, 10 15 turns to build an army. But after you build it, by making various sacrifices, you know, uh, let the forests burn down, let the rivers flood because we are now building this, you know, um, I don't know, you know, uh, stifle our economy, whatever, we have to build this army. You made numerous hard decisions every turn just to make it possible in, in 15 turns to have an army to defeat another city or city-state or empire, whatever. After 15 turns, if you don't capitalize on what you just did, you're screwed. You have 10 units that have nothing to do. If you decide against it, oh no, I was just kidding, I, I actually don't want to attack anyone. These units should start re uh, revolting, rebelling, pillaging, plundering. You have to pay for them, you know, like, you can't pay for their maintenance. They start, you know, pillaging the, 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 the countryside. You, you are... You're screwed because you you did something, invested your time into it and everything, and you decided against it uh, or, or 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 failed, you lost. Or you are so backwards that you have to you know lick your wounds for the next fifty turns. That's what decision making game should be about, and it's not. It's a clicking game. The only thing they introduced is different forms of clicking and everything is positive everything is positive based and there is no there is no downside to anything there is no disadvantage to anything it's like watching the grass grow instead it could have been a much much more interesting game than it is and it might sell well it might you know people might love it uh, it might uh, have a huge fan base and whatever, but in reality, this is a shit game. It really is, you know, and you, it might take uh, hundreds of hours to realize this fact, but you will find yourself enjoying small things that somehow escaped the developers in this clicking game and it's actually a challenging decision or something like that. You will want these moments to happen again, but in reality you will find yourself that you're a moron because you're enjoying something that's curing your OCD instead of, you know, like presenting you with a challenge. And this is why Civilization series fails in multiplayer as well. So not only it doesn't port well to other medium, it also plays poorly in multiplayer because while you are playing your turn, nothing really is happening. When you're waiting for other people's turns, nothing is really happening. Everything takes ages to create. Everything is irrelevant. And when things happen, you can lose the whole game in five turns. Why? Because none of the turns really matter. And the worst part is, that the combat, so the highlight of multiplayer and whatever games, is so poorly executed and it takes so long time that it's silly. And yes, whatever you might think about Civilization VI, I ho hopefully I managed to, to, to impress you with my thoughts, impress as in, you know, shared thoughts. Um, and they reached you. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, hopefully I managed to achieve that, uh, th that you can see why, why this is half-cooked. This is a terrible direction that this franchise is taking. Terrible one. And 
when it starts failing, uh, it will, you know, it will, it, it, it will fail big. Because what will happen? Some other developer who has money, like, I don't know, Blizzard, for example, will say, fuck it, we'll create a Civilization 7 game. It will destroy, it will destroy Phyrexis Civilization series. Like what happened with, with, with SimCity. Uh, 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 Paradox Interactive destroyed SimCity with uh, uh, City Skylines. It, it, the company literally ceased to exist. This won't be so spectacular like that was because they failed in the basic game development. But it will happen. Thank you for your time.